Good morning. Welcome to St. George Church as we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent. The celebrant for today is Father Tom, assisted by Deacons Joe Panic and Joe Truesdale. Mass is being celebrated for the intentions of Richard Morin, Karen Paisano, and Kathleen Dobrzynski. This week at St. George, our Lenten evening of reflection is this Wednesday, March 10th at 6.30 p.m., presented by Father Tom. The presentation will be followed by adoration and an opportunity for confession. Reservations are required. Join us on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. in the church for our Lenten series. We will walk with Jesus from the Garden of Gethsemane to the Mount of Calvary and experience a deeper understanding of Christ's unconditional love for us. No sign of reservation is required. Join us for the Stations of the Cross every Friday during Lent at 12 noon and evening stations at 7 p.m. The Stations of the Cross are live streamed to our Facebook page. Please see the bulletin for additional details and other church announcements. Please silence all cell phones and other electronic devices. We greet one another in the Lord. Please stand and wave a friendly greeting to those around you. Strike the rock, 
and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God, and who is saying it to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where, can you, where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? who gave us his cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. This water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I not be, may not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Your people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we do understand. Because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship Him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, called the Christ, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking with you. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. In our first reading today, the Israelites were wandering in the desert. And they're grumbling to Moses that they're dying of thirst. Although God satisfies their physical thirst, the people are supposed to come to be aware that God is with them, and he knows their needs. He wants their thirst to be the desire for the Father, the one who sent him. Today, Jesus comes to Jacob's well, and after his disciples go into town to buy food, a Samaritan woman comes at noon to get water. She has come to the well where Jesus is resting. The story tells us that she came about noon. 
And that's, that's pretty much the answer to the hardest part of the day. Noon is the, but she needs water for her thirst. And the possibly there's another reason. Jesus asked her for a drink. His thirst may be for more than water. He thirsts for those who are in need of his mercy. Jesus shows us again that Jewish law is not going to stop him from seeking this woman. He is talking to a Samaritan, a woman alone, and if he shares her cup, he will be ceremonial and clean in the Jewish tradition. The Jews and the Samaritans have been at odds for centuries, and there is no love lost between them. What Jesus is doing and saying to a Samaritan woman, something a good Jew would never do. How many stories of Jesus have we heard that he breaks the norms in order to bring us to him? Always the shepherd. Now we come to the heart of the matter. After the woman tells Jesus why he should not do what he is doing, he persists, tells her he can give her the living water, water that will rise up to eternal life. And now comes the other reason she comes at noon, when she would probably be there alone. Part of the story that is not in the gospel that I shared with you, Jesus knows and tells her that she has had five husbands. The one she lives with now is not even her husband. He lets her know about her past, but it does not affect what he wants for her. What he wants for us. She has come at noon so that others will not be there to shame her or make fun of her. This reminds me of a story that Father Ronald Rollheiser tells. Jesus is coming to town and a man is selected to meet him at the airport. As the man is driving to meet Jesus, he is beginning to panic that Jesus will know everything he has ever done. The plane has arrived, and as the man waits for the passengers to come down the jetway, he becomes even more agitated about what Jesus will think of him. Finally, Jesus comes out of the arrival door, and when he sees the man, Jesus' face beams with a beautiful smile. He approaches the man and takes him into his arms and embraces him. When Jesus tells the woman at the well about the living water, she challenges Jesus by asking him if he is greater than Jacob. And how then can he give this living water? Now they've begun to talk, to have a conversation. He has turned her away from the tension to a sense of understanding. The thirst that Jesus is quenching is being quenched as his for her eternal life. Now she begins to realize that he may be the Messiah. Today we read the Gospel as part of the scrutinies that RCA candidates James and Chris are going through. That Lent is a time we all call to reflect on how we thirst for God. St. Augustine in his Confessions, as he looks back on his life and his relationship with God, says, Our hearts are restless until they rest in you. The word thirst can mean many more than needing something to drink. It can mean a compulsion, eagerness, a need. Among others, this season, we bring ourselves to a place where we recognize that we want God in our, God in our lives. We recognize that we are sinners. And as Jesus said, we are to repent, to change, that his kingdom is at hand. It is a time for us to realize our thirst for him is an eagerness, a need, and a compulsion to want to share his love, love with us and our love with him and his people. It is a time of hope, as Paul tells us in the second reading. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, 
who has been given to us. I believe that Jesus thirsts after each and every one of us. He came to be with us, to share what we are to be, to die on the cross and rise from the dead. Earlier in John's Gospel, we have heard so often that God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish and have eternal life. During Lent, we are reminded that it is a time for prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. The bulletin and what we hear at church offers us ways to practice those, but how we practice those virtues may be different for each and every one of us. But what is important is what does it take us to go beyond our earthly, to our earthly world toward the crunch of thirst that Jesus offers. So now as we continue our journey to the Easter together, we have the hope that Jesus gives us. He gives us the confidence to believe in him, and that he will share the living water with us that will satisfy the thirst for God and his love. He gave us the Holy Spirit and his own body and blood to strengthen us on this journey. Today the Church calls the elect to conversion, to deepen their resolve, to hold fast to Christ and to carry out the decision to love God above all. Let us all pray that at this time in silence for them to be given a spirit of repentance, a sense of sin and strength of will to live in true freedom as children of God. God of power, you send your Son to be our Savior, grant that this elect, who, like to the woman of Samaria, thirsts for living water, may turn to the Lord as they hear his word, and acknowledge the sins and weaknesses that weigh them down, protect, protect them from vain reliance on self, and defend them from the power of Satan, free them from the spirit of deceit so that admitting the wrong they have done, they may attain purity of heart and advance on the way to salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the fountain for which they thirst. You are the master whom they seek. In your presence, they dare not claim to be without sin, for you alone are the Holy One of God. They open their hearts to you in faith, they confess their faults and labor their hidden wants. You love, free them from their infirmities, heal their sickness, quench their thirst and give them peace. In the power of your name, which we call upon in faith, stand by them now and heal them. Rule over that spirit of evil, conquered by yours rising from the dead. Show your plague the way of salvation the Holy Spirit, that they may come to, to worship the Father in truth. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, this community now sends you forth to reflect more deeply upon the Word of God, which you have shared with us today. Be assured of our loving support and prayers for you. We look forward to the day when you will share, share fully in the Lord's table.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, born the Father of all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of substantial the Father. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Let us pray in all our intentions. For those preparing to enter the church on Easter, who today received the first scrutiny, that they may be persevered in the faith of the church and in a living life to a holy life. We pray for the Lord. Lord. And for all of our leaders, that they might work toward the common good of all people, so that those who live on the margins of society may be given the assistance and the support that they need. We pray for the Lord. Lord. And for us, for our own thing, that we may experience the sacrament of reconciliation with a renewed death and to taste that infinite mercy of God. We pray to the Lord. And for the poor, the suffering, the lonely, and for all of those who do not know the love of Jesus, that they may meet people who will share with them this beautiful journey knowing Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord. And for all the faithful departed, that they may see the face of God. And we remember all of us who shared this pilgrimage with others who we know who have died, and also for those who have died recently. Edward McDonald, Joe Drusick, and for all of who have died from this pandemic and from any disease, and from any cause, in any way, we pray to the Lord. My eyes are always on the Lord, for He rescues my feet from the snare. Turn to me and have mercy on me, who lives and reigns forever. I pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with the sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will, will, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let me still of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered in one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Blaise our Bishop and other clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you through our ages, we may merit to be chorus to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. The Savior's command and follow my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and never. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer to each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven, and are nourished while still on earth, with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm not too good at this. How about the married couples? Can everybody please be seated? Now, how about the married couples who were married during March? Would you stand up, please? No way. <laughs> I will. <laughs> My, our youngest and our oldest children were born in March. My dad was born in March. We got all kinds of. My great granddaughter, everybody, we have a lot of. But for all of you who know people who were born or married anytime, whether it's March or anytime, please extend your blessings to them. Family life is so important to our world. Our societies depend on our family life. So God bless all of you who are married, regardless of what time of the year. God bless you all, and may your marriages and your family life grow abundantly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So it means that you made this till end of the year already? And we are done with blessings. <laughs> no, we're going to double up the next one. Okay, great. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.